In this video, we will cover the concept of reflection and transmission at a load impedance. Let's begin by drawing a circuit model showing all of the voltage and current reflections happening at a load. So the rectangular box is our load impedance ZL. VL is the, current, is the voltage across the load and IL is the current through the load. We also have an incident or forward voltage V0 plus, and then a reflected or backward voltage V0 minus. And we have our incident current wave I0 plus, as well as the reflected current wave I0 minus. And although I am drawing I0 minus in the same direction as I0 plus. We know from the math that it carries a negative sign in front of it, which means that it is actually traveling the opposite direction. Let's also define a z axis, which will mark how far away on the transmission line we are away from the load impedance. We will say that the load is located at z equals 0. And if we move a, a distance L away from the load, where L is a positive number, then we are at location z equals minus L. We will also write several equations relating the current and the voltage at the load impedance. The first equation is that the voltage across the load, VL, is equal to the current through the load, IL, multiplied by ZL. The second equation is that VL is equal to the incident voltage, V plus, plus the, ref uh, the reflected voltage, V minus. And the third equation is that IL, the current through the load, is equal to the incident current I plus plus the reflected current I minus, which is equal to V plus divided by Z naught, the characteristic impedance, minus V minus divided by Z naught. Note that when I say incident, I am talking about the forward wave and when I say reflected, I'm talking about the backward wave. Using these three equations, we can find the ratio of V minus to V plus. And this ratio is defined as gamma, which is the reflection coefficient. And gamma is a complex quantity. We can also find the ratio of VL to V plus. And this ratio is defined as tau. And tau is the transmission coefficient and it is equal to one plus gamma. Let's write the expression for V of Z equal to V naught plus e to the minus J beta Z plus V naught minus e to the plus J beta Z. Substituting in gamma this is equivalent to the following expression. 
In the same way, we can write the current i of z equal to i naught plus multiplied by e to the minus j beta z minus gamma e to the plus j beta z. Where i naught plus is equal to v naught plus divided by z naught. Having found uh, or having written out v of z and i of z in this format, it is now easy to find expressions for the forward power p plus as well as the backward power p minus. Now remember that the definition of time average power is equal to one half multiplied by the real part of v times the conjugate of i. Using this expression, we can find the forward power p plus, and this is equal to one half multiplied by the magnitude of v naught plus squared divided by z naught. Then the backward power or the reflected power p minus is equal to one half times the magnitude of gamma squared multiplied by the magnitude of v naught plus squared divided by z naught. Finally, we can also find the power that is dissipated in the load and this is equal to p plus minus p minus, the forward power minus the reflected power and that is equal to one half multiplied by the magnitude of v naught plus squared divided by z naught multiplied by one minus the magnitude of gamma squared.